today I am trying to go through my library haul, my recent library haul for our bug unit. And I figured I would just go ahead and just show you what I got and tell you a little bit about what I'm thinking. Whenever I get a big library haul like this, I try to go through the books and just kind of skim through the books and just, I don't know, I just spend a little bit of time thinking about different ideas and when to use certain books. Of course, like I told you before, I put all of our library books inside of our library bin and they can read them at any time, but I also like to use um, them as an addition to our actual lessons throughout the week. So I try to go through each one of them and figure out which ones would be best fitting um, that would have the most you know information inside that would add to whatever we're learning for that day so I thought I would just go ahead and show you what I got you guys I got so much stuff so I'm hoping you can see me you guys would I like a cupcake sure honey okay so we just um, we just took the kids to the toy store so they could redeem some of their token points. So, Savannah's got a little cupcake set and the boys are playing with Legos, of course. So, while they do that, I thought maybe they would give me a little bit of time so I can go through this. Mommy! But this one wants to Mommy, be Mommy, would you yes. like a chocolate muffin? It's hard to take this off, but can, can you take it off for me so you have a muffin? I don't know if these are supposed to be off. Yeah, can Oh, there it is. Oh, that's really Chocolate cute. Muffin. Chocolate muffin. Let me see. And then you can have another one. Cupcakes, guys. <laughs> Would anybody like a cupcake? A muffin. Got Look. Chocolate oh. muffin, guys. <laughs> Chocolate it's muffin. It's like I'm talking like a grown-up. Like I actually <laughs> I You're cook, talking like a grown-up? Yeah, like I cook these for the kids. And mommy, you can mm -hmm. also change them. Change the top. I understand. So you could put like mommy, so, tops. You can put like okay, one mommy, top on mommy, chocolate and take, one top on vanilla. Mommy, can you t take the vanilla one? Sure, but and you, would you mind if this. I? Okay, but would you mind if I just go ahead and show them the books we got from the library? Yes. Okay. Okay, I got one muffin, and and then I just leave it for. A flavor cake inside. A flavor middle. cake inside? It's the middle. It's going to be very frosty. It's going to be very it's good. Up. Guess she's going to be hanging with me while I show you guys what I got from the library. So, let's see. First of all, I got Charlotte's Web. I mentioned that in one of my stories on Instagram. We've we read this before, but felt like it was pretty appropriate since a spider is an arthropod. So we'll go ahead and read through this again. Plus I think when I read this, Savannah was probably a baby. So it should be fun to read this again with her. Okay, so whenever I go through a big library haul, I just kind of like quickly open up the books and skim through them. If it is a picture book, then I just read through the story and try to get a feel for um, what kind of vocabulary words are inside um, and if there's any like mini lessons I can pull out so that's normally what I do nothing super fancy just really quick and easy um, just to kind of maximize my time when I finally sit down and read the books with the kids um, to see when I'm going to pull the book out like if I'm going to pull it out during reading time or if it would be good to use during our science time or our history time I kind of open them all up and then I just make little notes about when I will use it. Sometimes I use little um, tiny post-it notes so that it'll help me remember how I had planned on using it. And that way I just feel like I'm being more intentional about the way that I use the things that I get from my library. The Ultimate Bug Opedia. I definitely think that a lot of these books I'm probably going to purchase. Maybe like three or four I think I'm gonna gonna end up purchasing. So I, I don't know, we'll see. But um, that is what I love about the library is that you can really get a feel for a book first before you spend the money on it because you may love a book, but um, I don't know, my, my best friend and I were talking about this the other day because she's a book hoarder. And I would be too, but the way my life is set up, I'm trying to minimize and just use a bit more wisdom. So I'm gonna let her hoard all the books and I'm just going to be a friend, a frequent 
frequenter, a frequenter of the library. First of all, I love the pictures. Um, I love that they are not illustrations, they're actual like beautiful, beautiful photographs of these bugs. And you guys know that, uh, that totally speaks to me because I am a photographer. So I'm totally like thinking about the kind of lens they're using and the angle and all of that other stuff that most people wouldn't even think about. But the photographs in this book are incredible. <laughs> so they're incredible. And it just is really chock full of the information about all these different kinds of bugs. So this is one of these books that we will use as a reference obviously we're not going to be able to go from one end to the other which is why this is more like a book that i would look to purchase but it's nice to be able to just kind of throw it in there the thing that i liked or that i kind of took note of was like the jewel bug gallery they just have these beautiful galleries of these bugs you guys like the kids and i were talking about the jewel bug um the other day and how beautiful they are like look at how beautiful these bugs are so this one is going to be definitely be a go-to for us the national geographic kids ultimate bugopedia the next one is walter's wonderful web it's a first book about shapes i thought it was really cute and they managed to throw in the different shapes using the web so i thought that was really really creative so um Savannah is really gonna enjoy this book. The next one I got is Bugs Galore. Just another really cute bug book. Uh, the page that I took notice of the most was this Lighting Bugs. So, uh, I don't know if this is appropriate these days, but when I was younger, I used to get like a mason jar. My cousins and I would get mason jars and we would go out and catch the lightning bugs and put them in the jar. So this totally made me think of that. And is it wrong to do that as like, you know, it's okay, right? <laughs> I, could just, I could just poke holes in the top so that we can see the jar light up. That has to be okay, right? That has to be okay. So I think that's probably something we'll do with them. But this book was just really nice and cute. The next one is a board book. I try to grab the board books when I can because they're just nice to be able to do with Savannah. Simple words and things that she can read on her own. So she's already read this about two or three times. So nice to throw in the mix. This one I think was actually, you guys know that we are using um, the Good and the Beautiful Science, Arthropod Science um, unit this time around to go along with just my regular ideas for the unit. And I think that this book is actually listed inside of the unit. So I haven't completely gone through everything, but I think two of the books that I had already picked up were recommended inside of the unit. So I love when that happens. That made me really happy so this is just in the tall tall grass this one just has very um very few vocabulary words we'll probably focus more on art in this case um i was even thinking about maybe doing like a tissue paper art or something that would make it look a little bit more like the art that's in this book then i got this first facts bugs book um, this one is kind of more geared towards Savannah. I had gotten, I think there's like three or four reference type of bug books that are a bit more heavy and for the boys. So I wanted to get one for Savannah as well. So we just have this first back bugs book and I just took note of the ant armies. There is all sorts of different types of bugs repeated throughout the books. And I just try to like bookmark the ones that I think are really interesting to be able to point out to the kids. So I just love this little um, picture or illustration of, it's not an illustration, but it's a picture. I love this little photo of the honeypot ants. So I'll probably make sure to point that out to the kids. So we have um, this bug's book. The next one I have is Frank the Seven Legged Spider. This book is just really cute. Uh, one thing I noticed inside of this book is their use of little speech bubbles. We have several sets of writing papers on writing day. We get They get to choose which ones they would like to use. So they can use a sheet of writing paper for writing poetry. They could do something for writing comics. They could do something for writing a postcard. So this just made me think of that and I thought it would be good to point out to them in case that could get them inspired to go ahead and do like 
a comic strip. So that's what the speech bubbles made me think of. So I just kind of like bookmarked that section. And that's just Frank the Seven Legged Spider. The next one is Diary of a Spider. I really, I really like this book. <laughs> I thought the concept was so cute. It literally is like a diary of the spider. So it'll have the date up at the top, March 16th. Gramp says that in his day, flies and spiders did not get along. Things are different now. This really made me think of writing as well. So we have a sheet. Um, like I said, we have all those different printouts that they can use to write and um i actually use a newsletter or newspaper type of format um for pulling together their homeschool portfolio so this just reminded me of that and made me think that maybe i could just do like a blank version of that for them to be able to create their own little newspaper article as a part of their writing so that's why i bookmarked that little area but this book is super cute and it just goes through the different days in the diary of the spider i think they also have this in the diary of the worm too but i really like this book. this one is one of my favorites you guys and i'm definitely purchasing this one um this one is little red writing i love writing books i love books that at the end of it the kids just like grab their paper and their pencils and just get to writing this one is absolutely absolutely one of my favorites for that so we we're going to be reading this one again um and then i'm also going to be introducing a lot more of the parts of speech which i will tell you more about that in another video um but i love this book this book is like amazing and i every time i read it i just get more and more ideas of how we can make writing um, even more exciting. We've never had really any issues writing, but I also don't really give too much. I mean, we're really free about it and we take the approach of telling stories and I figured that we can just spend time later on correcting like punctuation or I don't know parts of speech and things like that we can do later but for right now we just spend time enjoying writing as much as possible. You have to read it. It's little red writing. It's so cute, you guys. <laughs> it's so cute. The next one is another book that was on the recommended list inside of my Good and the Beautiful Science Arthropods unit packet. And this is Small Wonders. I had no idea it was even in there. So whenever I see that, like I said, I just feel like, you know, I'm doing something right with my life. <laughs> anyway, but this is Small Wonders. And the page that I bookmarked inside of here was... I just really like that it has a sense of exploration and discovery. You know, I'm always trying to point that out and make that a thing in our homeschool so that the kids really have a sense of being explorers and discoverers and things like that. So this book definitely had that same type of theme to it. There was something else I really liked about it. Where was it? Oh, I also really like the back of this book has a little historical note, which I thought was really, really cool. And they just talk about, um, I'm not even going to say his name because I'm pretty sure I'm going to mess it up. But um, they just talk about how there was a specific way in the 1800s that scientists often studied plants and animals and it was in laboratories and things like that and he kind of changed the way they did that because he wanted to do something different he wanted to um, study them in their natural um, habitats and so I really wanted to highlight this little historical note and I love when they do this in books I love when they put like pages of information and fun facts and things like that in the beginning and the end of books so I like this one a lot a lot a lot a lot this is small wonders this one is a really cute little story glass wings a butterfly's story and this is about glass wing butterflies i had no idea there was even such a thing butterflies that have see-through wings and how beautiful are they they are so pretty it's a really beautiful story with beautiful artwork i like it a lot a lot a lot um it has nice vocabulary in it a good mix of vocabulary for us to be able to read all together glass wings a butterfly story the next one is another buggy book. It is Bug Detective, Amazing Facts, Myths, and Quirks of Nature. Um, because we got it from the library, they have this little piece here because I guess it came with a magnifying glass, but that's no big deal. We can just add our little magnifying glass to the mix and have a bit of fun with it. I like using the magnifying glass going through books like this because they just have a bunch of facts 
all over the page so in order to get them to focus a bit more on the facts on the page because there's so many using the magnifying glass is so much fun so it's nice to see that with this book too it's just full of a lot of really fun information and it's one of those things where you get to just use that one instance reading the book where you can still kind of create that whole explore and discover type of feel so i really liked what i bookmarked in this book was the back of the book there's a little bug detective activities page and they just have a, a bunch of fun little activities that you can do to reinforce the information or that sense of exploration they have making a B hotel which we won't be doing <laughs> we won't be making a B hotel okay <laughs> they have making a B hotel um, they have making a caterpillar house we'll probably do that that sounds like a lot of fun to make a caterpillar house out of an old egg carton that seems like fun uh, make a ladybug turn a simple stone into your very own ladybug so I like that they have little activities in the back that you can do to just make it a little bit more fun so I like this book, Bug Detective. The next one is the best book of bugs. Just another one of those quick little, the thing that I kind of took note of in this book was the hardworking ant section. They just go through the life cycle of the ant and the different facts about the different kinds of ant. I, I just thought it was a really cool illustration for them to be able to see um, the way the ants, you know, how they carve out their little homes in the dirt whatever you know what i'm trying to say <laughs> right this one i took the most notice of so this is just another one the best book of books i also picked up another ant book ant cities because you because i already said we, we're not going to have an ant hill in the house because i've had issues with ants in my house in the past so i just can't i just can't bring an ant hill in the house so we're just going to have to read about it and go outside and look at them. <laughs> so this one is Bug Zoo. This one is really, I love the illustrations in this book. Um, very simple words. And I just, I really like this illustration of um, how he pulled together all of the bugs inside of the jars. So I thought that was cool. I thought we could talk about, um, uh, what is it? not categorizing but classifying I thought we could talk about classifying bugs or things like that here or being a collector and yeah so that was why I bookmarked that page but this book is really cute and really just really beautiful book short and sweet bug zoo this one I've showed you this one before so I'll just go through this quickly this is just a honeybee man we still have this one and I just kind of bookmarked the back page for us to be able to read through again some amazing facts about honey, honeybees and beekeepers. That is the honeybee man. Really guy? <laughs> a honeyed history. This book, I really like this book a lot. Brian, cut it out. <laughs> anyway why is he bothering me um the thing i bookmarked this time around this one is really chock full of information it's uh, kind of like on the, along the lines of my animalian book or um yeah just those that big resource book and i love it and i'm probably going to go ahead and get this one but i bookmarked the anatomy of the honeybee this page is beautiful it's just a beautiful illustration of the different parts of the honeybee and I love it so much, okay? I love this back page that is the Daily Buzz. So it just goes around and gives you um, different types of articles about all about bees and honey. And then there was another page that I really wanted to make sure that I pointed out. Oh, I know which one it was. So it has a whole section on pollinating pals. I think we're definitely going to um, take a deeper look into this because the kids always ask me why in the world God made bugs in the first place. Why so many of them and what are their purposes? So I think pollination is going to be a really big, you know, tool in explaining and discovering um, the answer to that question for them. So 
I love that page, but this is Bees, A Honeyed History. The next one I got is a super cute story, Velma Gratch and the Way Cool Butterfly. I love this story, I love this story because it basically talks about her and her sisters and how others pointed out these awesome things about her sisters and she didn't know what was so awesome about her just yet. And then she goes on this little journey and discovers that she is just such a fan of the butterfly and she studies the butterfly. There's so many things about this book I really like. Um, I really like how they did this little illustration um, whenever she came across a word that she wanted to remember and it was quite big. She would say it over and over again. So I think that's something I'm definitely gonna point out to the kids because that would be great. Just a, you know, a great little thing Thing that would help them memorize or um, remember the larger words that we come across. There was another larger words that we come across. Sorry about them. Look at this. How cute is this little girl? <laughs> She's so cute. I'm definitely going to make sure I point this out to them about how she found something super interesting and so she decided to discover more. So we are gonna land ourselves here for quite some time when we read this book together. So I like this story. Velma Gretsch. Um, The next one I got is more of like a resource as well. This is the big book of bugs. This book is beautiful, you guys, beautiful. The page that I kind of bookmarked here is the ants. I can see that ants is going to be a major focus in this unit for us. So I just big bookmarked that page, but all of these other pages are incredible. And the way I use these is, so I take a look at the table of context and the index, and then I just match up the different topics and subjects with what we are actually doing in, um, or plan to study during throughout our unit. Ladybugs, earthworms, and I think for us, hopping from one book to the next, again, just kind of like reinforces that sense of discovery. Um, so when we are doing things together, we just go and grab one book and open it up to the ant page. And then we go and move on to another book and open it up to the ant page. And normally somewhere along the way, they'll say, oh, I want to grab my notebook and write this down. Um, I get really like animated with it oftentimes, which I think makes them really excited. I try to keep with that, you know, whole, you know, I did theater when I was in school, so it's fun for me. <laughs> Ignore me, I'm getting tired. Anyway, that is the big book of books. Girl, what are you laughing at back there? You're laughing at your mom? <laughs> <laughs> they laugh at me all the time. <laughs> These bees count. This book is so cute, you guys. It's just like, I don't know, it's like a little miniature field trip that the kids can take while they're reading the book. So I just kind of bookmarked this page here, and I had a video that would go along with it that would just kind of go through um, the beekeeper and the steps of the beekeeper, what the beekeeper does, the equipment that the beekeeper wears. So this book is really super cute. I think it's really nice to see, for kids to see other little kids, whether they're illustrated or, you know, through video or whatever, that when they see other little kids kind of like exploring and doing really fun things. You know, we're a fan of dressing up and putting on that character. These bees count, which I found out that bees actually do count, kind of, sort of. They can differentiate between you know, where one object is and where there are two objects or three objects, which is insanely cool. At least I thought it was insanely cool. Anyway, so that's these bees count. And I'm at my last book, you guys. I have Unbelievables. This is actually a book of honeybee poems and paintings. So the one that I bookmarked here was this one about the life cycle of the bee. I love this beautiful painting about the life cycle of the bee. And then the poem says, Be coming from egg I hatch in just three days, beginning my new larval phase. I dwell in a six-sided cell. My cozy home befits me well. Then as a pupa, how I change, becoming something else so strange. My body slowly grows until I'm truly unbelievable. So that's really cool. And then they have a little bit of information on the life cycle of the bee. I really like this book. <laughs> so that is my last book, you guys. And that is it. 
that is it for my library haul from this bug unit so far. I have a few other things that I still have to pick up, but that's pretty much the meat of it. Um, and then I have on my calendar when things need to be checked out again so that I don't get huge library fun. <laughs> It's not even funny. <sighs> okay, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next video. Bye!